This is the time in our service where we celebrate communion. The Lord's Supper is a remembrance of what Christ did for us and a celebration of what we receive as a result of his sacrifice. If you are a believer and profess Christ as your Lord and Savior, please join us in examining your hearts and remembering Christ's sacrifice and what he has done for you. We are so blessed each week when we celebrate together as we are reminded of his love and also reminded of the joy that is ours and the peace that we have with him because of his finished work on the cross. The passage that we'll look at this morning is Matthew 5, verse 3. There are men coming down the aisles with Bibles. If you do not have a Bible, please hold your hand up and we'll put one in your hands. And if you don't own a Bible, you may take this one with you. Please pray with me. Father, we thank you for your word. We look to you each and every day for wisdom, for comfort, for the assurance of the love that you have for your children. Help us to see clearly and appreciate the privileges that we have because of your amazing saving grace. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's, uh, let's read together Matthew 5, 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let's first look at the context of this passage, and we'll do that by looking at three uh, different passages. First, in Matthew 4.23, just a chapter prior to chapter 5, Jesus was going throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness among the people. And then go to... Uh, Chapter 4, verse 25, it says, Large crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis and Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond the Jordan. And just prior to our passage, we have in Matthew 5, 1, Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. Jesus was on a mountainside, a mountain on the northeast shore of the Sea of Galilee. The mountain was known as the Mount of the Beatitudes. Even though Jesus was addressing primarily his disciples, who had already committed to follow him, the mountainside allowed Jesus to address a much larger audience. Beginning with Matthew 5, 3 and continuing through verse 12 is a section of our scripture known as the Beatitudes. The word Beatitude refers to supreme blessedness, happiness, and bliss. The Beatitudes describe the blessings by Jesus to all who had been given the faith to believe. The blessedness described in each beatitude is a God-given trait that can only be realized through a relationship with Jesus. When believers are blessed with a saving faith, their joy and happiness no longer rely on external circumstances, but are based instead on a deep sense of well-being and contentedness, knowing that they belong to Christ. In looking at Matthew 5, 3, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The beatitude begins with the word blessed. As do all of the, all of the beatitudes, blessed has the same meaning, meaning in each and refers to a state of happiness, contentment, and being fortunate. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Another way to say this would be to say, 
Happy are they who see themselves as they really are, spiritually lost, helpless, and hopeless, and recognizing they have no ability to save themselves. When we are poor in spirit, we realize that our only hope is to turn from our sin and believe in Jesus, to repent and seek God's forgiveness for our sins. We realize that we are totally dependent on God and we know we have no spiritual merit and no personal strength or accomplishments to contribute to our salvation. It can be described literally as a spiritual beggar who has nothing to bring to the table except for filthy rags. Total humility is the condition of the poor in spirit. Isaiah 66, 2 and Psalm 34, 18 describe the poor in spirit. But to this one I will look, to him who is humble and contrite of spirit and who trembles at my word. And in Psalm 34, 18, Yahweh is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. This is the first real instruction Jesus gave in the New Testament and his first recorded sermon. It all begins with that first statement, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You might ask the question, why does Jesus start here? He starts here because it is the foundation to becoming a believer. This is the fundamental characteristic of all who are and will be citizens of the kingdom of heaven. The first step in entering the kingdom, the first step in happiness is being poor in spirit and realizing your spiritual poverty. All other characteristics of the, of the Beatitudes flow from being poor in spirit. To be poor in spirit is to realize that you are outside of the kingdom of God and you can't get there on your own. Until you are poor in spirit, you will never know salvation and you will never know what it means to be born again. You can never understand the infinite worth of Christ until you see your own worthlessness. As long as you continue to hold on to your self-righteousness, your own self-importance, your own accomplishments, and your own self-morality, thinking that all of these will allow you to gain access to God's kingdom, you will never see God's grace. If you are here today and you have not any desire to empty yourself of your pride and self-worthiness to cry out to God for forgiveness you do not yet know the blessings that belong to the poor in spirit you do not know the happiness the joy the contentment and peace that is waiting for all who will believe in the saving work of Christ we beg you be reconciled to your Creator we also want, want you to know that we are so glad that you are here today. We pray that you recognize the gravity of your situation and that you would have a desire to know God. We pray that you would not leave today without speaking with one of the elders about God's grace. Believers, please join me in the celebration of communion and remember the price that was paid for your sins. Examine yourself and confess any sin for which you have yet to seek God's forgiveness. Men, please come and serve us. You may take communion on your own when you're ready, and I'll be back shortly to close this time in prayer.